What's your point today? So Google and YouTube are, according to a new press release, quote, investing in fact-checking. The release announced the company was awarding, in its own words, quote, a $13.2 million grant to the International Fact-Checking Network at the nonprofit Pointer Institute to launch a new global fact-check fund to support their network of 135 fact-checking organizations from 65 countries covering over 80 languages. All right, so this sounds great, right? It sounds like corporate responsibility, like a massive tech company doing what it can to make its products less harmful. This donation basically doubles Pointer's 2021 revenue, according to its 990 form, which reports about 13 million in total revenue last year and about 14.6 million the year before. Alphabet, Google's parent company, brought in some $257 billion in 2021 for what it's worth. This grant is really no sacrifice for Google. It's a shrewd and cynical business move that will give the company more cover for censorship on its platforms, and it will make the media worse. Why? because the Pointer Institute is one of the most poisonous peddlers of disinformation in all of media, despite being one of the loudest and most sanctimonious critics of it. Under the absurd pretense of nonpartisanship, that's a quote from its 990 actually, Pointer, which operates PolitiFact, undermines the credibility of journalism that cuts against the establishment narrative. Its fact checks are propaganda. They are used by major corporations like Google and Meta, which you'll be surprised to learn, also funds the group to suppress counter-narrative information. Pointer weaponizes its elite clout and neutral pretense to enable big tech censorship. One study on PolitiFact from the conservative group Newsbusters looked at the group's record and found by simple counting that over Biden's first 20 months in office, he had gotten 58 fact checks, while Biden critics had been fact checked 338 times. Overall, this is per Newsbusters, there were 5.8 fact checks of Biden's critics for every one of the president himself. A lot of the problems with PolitiFact stem from what's called selection bias, choosing constantly to fact check every claim from anti-establishment voices and not fact check every claim from, say, high profile Democrats. The fact checks themselves are terrible too, often engaging in these mental gymnastics to give cover to Democrats and engaging in mental gymnastics then to undercut conservatives. Back in July, Robbie Suave in Reason walked through how PolitiFact fact checks on mask efficacy, COVID survivability, and even the definition of a recession were misleading at best and flat out wrong at worst. When PolitiFact rated a claim that said, quote, the White House is now trying to protect Joe Biden by changing the definition of the word recession as containing, quote, false information, that claim was then suppressed with disclaimers on Facebook and Instagram, and they rely on Pointer, Pointer to credential official fact-checking organizations. So Mark Zuckerberg outsourced fact-checking to these groups to take some heat off of Meta. An analysis published last year in the academic journal Journalism Studies found that out of an 858 sample of PolitiFact fact checks, 33% quote, checked a complex proposition and assigned one truth rating to it. This is problematic as the reader might interpret the truthfulness of an individual claim, the authors wrote, adding that 11% of the sample were fact checks the author deemed uncheckable. Uncheckable, the authors of the study said were uncheckable. Those were defined as statements, quote, whose truthfulness cannot be defined in practice, e.g. claims about the future and vague claims. So that's 44% of the sample in total Nearly half of the fact checks then that are utilized by corporate gatekeepers. There are way too many examples to count, but let's look at one more. After the horrific shootings in Buffalo and Uvalde earlier this year, PolitiFact tweeted, quote, beware of misinformation about red flag laws, including critics who say they lack due process, which is not accurate. Another false claim is that the laws allow people with a grudge, such as an ex-spouse, to take guns away. Whatever you think about red flags, even the liberal ACLU has raised concerns in recent years about due process and legislation in both Rhode Island and California. And as the Washington Examiner pointed out, one study of Connecticut found 32% of confiscation orders are ultimately overturned. Again, it does not matter whether you love or hate red flag laws. What matters is that PolitiFact and Pointer present themselves as neutral actors, and then corporations launder that neutrality so to suppress the free press. 
the red flag tweet on its own is clear disinformation. Worse yet, it's disinformation peddled by the self-appointed guardians of accuracy who are weaponized by corporations. It linked to guidelines from Pointer itself on how to cover firearm legislation. Their training materials, which are used by newsrooms around the world, are garbage, and Google is going to help spread those guidelines even further. I would actually have zero issue with all of this if PolitiFact and Pointer didn't claim to be nonpartisan and didn't do so in cooperation with ideologically monopolistic corporate actors. They're the useful idiots of corporate power that doesn't really give a damn about the free press, but they're also totally on the same page as their billionaire benefactors when it comes to certain topics that demand rigorous journalistic scrutiny like COVID and Russian collusion and puberty blockers. This week when Bob Iger was asked about his stance that Disney on Disney and politics, he gave an answer some conservatives cheered, saying, quote, do I like the company being embroiled in controversy? Of course not. It can be distracting and it can have a negative impact on the company. And to the extent that I can work to kind of quiet things down, I'm going to do that. But he also said some issues, quote, have been branded political when they're really just about being, quote, a good citizen. That's where we get to a deeper problem. We know the personal is political. Some people disagree with Disney's stance on LGBT issues, and some people think, though, that makes those folks bad citizens. But that question is absolutely a political one. Pointer's guidelines on trans athletes, for instance, are inherently opposed to the stances people on the left, like Tulsi Gabbard, have taken on that issue. Again, whether you agree with that position or not, it doesn't matter. Claiming the mantle of neutrality while taking a specific ideological stance is not healthy to the free press. It is actually wildly counterproductive. Doing all of this with admitted biases, because it is actually subjective, would at least be less destructive. But that would require people to acknowledge things they don't see as biases really are. In a 2021 article on PolitiFact, botching a lab leak fact check, Matt Taibbi wrote, quote, when companies dragged fact checking out in public and made it a beast of burden for use in impressing audiences, they defamed the tradition. Google just boosted that defamation to the tune of $13 million, and the guardians of the fourth estate over at Pointer are proud to help. Meanwhile, all the politicians who take money from Google, which gives away campaign cash pretty equally, will either complain about the press or wax poetic about how essential it is to a functioning democracy. They're right on that count, of course, but they won't say anything about Google's $13 million grant to make the media worse. Ryan, you might disagree with me on some of that, but it, it is really concerning. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.